Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Fiona Drawings in the Drawer. I hope you're having a good day. So today I'm going to show you my painting process for the portrait of Edith Holden for my Inspirational Woman series. I never throw out a painting that didn't turn out right for me, as watercolour paper tends to be very expensive. I will use the back for swatches and tests, which are a very important part of the painting process because watercolour in pans looks nothing like what they look like on paper. So it's very important to swatch them, both if you're creating a palette and before painting as well, just to check which colour you're going to get. I almost always have a sort of underpainting when I start a portrait and I will test the colour to be to see which one is more suitable for the mood I am going for. This can be anything. I use browns, blues, violet and even green. In my book there is no colour that is wrong for painting skin. In fact, the more the merrier. I use colour to show the character, the emotions, but I also use it to create the aesthetic I've come to love and which I think is part of my style. It can be different for everyone, it's a matter of test and trial really, and one day you end up creating something you like, so explore that technique in every direction. Find the colour that strikes that chord and go for it. You'll see me use this technique later in this video. I'm using Windsor & Newton masking fluid again today. I have to say after several disasters with other brands, it's my favourite and it works really well and is easy to apply. I use this tool which I believe is called a fine liner or something like that. And it's just perfect for this medium. I think it's a medium anyway. For this painting, masking fluid was quite essential to mask off some of the sprigs from the nest on Edith Holden's head. Nests are pretty messy and there are straws going off in every direction. So it's good to show that to get that contrast in there, which will show up really nicely after you've uh, added the darker paint and then take off the rubbed off the masking fluid. So of course I had to use a dark brown for the inside of the nest because it's a shadow area. For the outside of the nest, of course I went lighter and I started from a mixture of raw sienna and yellow ochre and worked wet and wet until I was happy with that first layer. Then I let it dry and went in with a darker shade. For the eggs, I used cobalt blue and tried to leave a highlight. highlight. I should have used the masking fluid for this too, but I just didn't think of it at the time. After I just went in with my darker browns, uh, I think Van Dyke brown is one of the ones I use mostly when it comes to a nice rich dark brown. And I created the shadows and effect of the straws and grass curling in a circular shape. A long fine brush is excellent for this if you have one. If not, find one that narrows into a nice neat tip. So you can see that I ended up going for a green underpainting here. And I have to say it's possibly my favourite colour to use not a bright green, but a murky olivey green, which nicely creates undertones in many skin types. Once that is done, I basically just reach for any colour that takes my fancy, but very often I go for Madder Lake Red Light. I have this in lots of different brands, but the pan that has the biggest dent in it is White Nights. I love those watercolours. The price versus quality ratio is just excellent. And as far as I can tell, they're considered to be professional watercolours in Russia. So I don't know how they can be so cheap compared to American and European artist grade brands. And I like to mix yellow ochre uh, and uh, with this uh, uh, Madder Lake red. And when you place that mix on top of the green and blue or even brown undertones, everything just pops. I like giving portraits a flushed look. I'm not sure why, it's something I really like to do. It makes the character look alive and filled with some sort of passion. It can make a character look hot or cold too. It just adds so much in so many ways. I'm addicted to painting flushed cheeks and a red nose. And once I get the first few layers done, I usually know where the painting's going. And I simply keep working using the same technique and adding shadows where there should be shadows and reds and pinks and yellows where there should be light and warmth. You can see me do this uh, here and I'll be back in just a minute or so to tell you more about my painting process and about this amazing lady.
eyes can be a little tricky. I have to always remember part of the bulb or eyeball is going to be in shadow too, and part of it is going to be lighter, and I mean the whole eye, not just the iris. So this is important to make the eyes more realistic. I'm certainly not painting in a hyper-realistic manner here, but uh, you like to get your, let's call it, facts straight so that you are conveying something that looks real, even if like realism is not exactly what you're going for. So let me tell you briefly about my inspirational woman number 10, yay. I think she was a very obscure character. I think I would never have come across her if I hadn't been given this book by someone quite a few years ago now. I was always intrigued by the beautiful botanical illustrations in it, by the delicate paintings of birds and small English countryside animals like fox, uh, foxes, rabbits and mice. I think mice are definitely in there. Edith Holden was an artist and art teacher who lived in England between the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. She later became known for her book of Nature Knots, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. You can find pictures of her beautiful watercolours which illustrate this book on the internet and they are just so amazing and fairy tale like. Edith would carry her art supplies with her around the countryside surrounding her home and painted what she saw in plain air. She kind of reminds me in a way of Beatrix Potter of the famous Peter Rabbit books. Anyway, as all of my inspirational women, she was someone who had passion and was creative and lived passionately and creatively till her last day on earth. On March 16th, 1920, she was found drowned in the backwater of the River Thames near Kew Gardens Walk. It is believed she had been out painting and had tried to reach a branch, but had fallen into the river. It is a sad ending, so it's amazing we have her beautiful work to commemorate her. So that's all for me for today. Feel free to stay here and watch the rest of this time lapse. I hope you enjoy it. You can check out my Instagram account at the handle drawings in a drawer, all in one word, for more inspirational ladies. If you like this video, it would help out my channel a lot if you liked and subscribed. If you have any requests, I'd be happy to hear them. Otherwise, you can tune in for my next videos and some special surprises in the weeks leading up to Halloween by hitting the notification bell. See you soon.